Good morning, everybody. This is Michelle with Creative Operation, and I'm here today with a Country Craft Creations Design Team project. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you so much for everything. I appreciate all of your support and your kind comments, and I just really hope that you enjoy this tutorial. This is going to be a little bit different. I'm using the exclusive Twas the Night papers done by Country Craft Creations, and I gotta tell you, th this paper is absolutely gorgeous and it tells the story of Twas the Night Before Christmas. Um, we all know this story. I am basically doing this as a photo album, but I also wanted to be able to use it as, you know, kind of a storybook. When I first saw the papers and how they are, they, they basically tell the story of Twas the Night through the papers. And the designs here, I'm using the 8x8 pack. The designs here are full-page designs with the actual poem in the papers. So I'm, I'm trying to think about how I wanted to present this paper because I didn't want to cover up the images, obviously, with like photo mats and things like that. But then how to do pockets, how to do all this stuff. So I came up with a great idea. I think it works really well, and I'm super pleased with how it turned out um, with what was in my head and how to, to present it in a an album style. So it's not only the story, but it's also an album. So again, this is Twas the Night by Country Craft Creations. Um, you can see I did use part of the um, the um, cover page to do part of my thing. Um, and then I only have like one page and some cut aparts left. I used pretty much this whole entire pack to make this paper and or to make this uh, project and it just turned out really gorgeous. So let's talk about the size of the album. So it is nine inches um, wide eight and a half inches tall and it has a two and a quarter inch spine and I did a few things a little bit different because I really wanted to incorporate the eight by eight pages and I didn't want to cut them down so the pages are fairly good size um I used artisan cardstock in um brown uh but I think that if you used um you know natural or craft olive black those colors would look really beautiful with this paper collection. Um, I also did use Gold Mirror from Country Craft Creations. And um, on the cover here, I'll show you this. I made the flowers, the kind of brownish flowers here. The red ones were purchased from my stash. Um, I also made the green uh, foliage with the leaves and the swirly things and I'll show you that in a second too and then added the ribbon from my stash as well so when I talk about making the flowers um, I did I've showed this a couple times um, already but I used the uh, small festive poinsettia dye that I got from country craft creations and I used the smaller um, flower of that uh, particular dye. There's two different sizes there. So I use the smaller and I use the foliage as well. And then I also ran it through my floral basic shaping mold. And this shaping mold is really awesome because you can put any kind of flower in those circles and you can get that nice um, molding of it. So I did that with my flowers. I also used some of the prills that I got from the, the shop as well to put in the center of my flowers. And I just thought that was really pretty. So I used some scraps that I had left over um, from the paper collection to do that. And it turned out just gorgeous, I think. So then I added the, the red flowers, like I said, from my stash. And then this little bit of ribbon that I had um, left over, I tied it into a triple bow and then glued it on there. So I did use ribbon here. So the, the cover is nine inches wide. The pattern paper is only eight inches. So I did add a piece here. I'll kind of walk you through how I did that. Um, on the spine, I chose to, let me open this up here real quick so you can see the whole entire cover. So um, I did the same thing front and back and I used the same paper across the spine to kind of give it that, um, you know, book feeling when you close the cover and then also to create more room because the papers are eight by eight and the covers are nine inches wide. So I'll show you how I did that, but it just turned out beautiful. I just love how this paper looks. So let's go on the inside 
and I'll show you what I mean. So on the front covers, so you see on the front cover here, I use this title as the title page, but also it's the front of the story or the first of the story. It was a night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring. And then you open it up, not even a mouse. So you can see what I'm talking about with as far as the story goes. So then the next page continues on with the stockings were hung by the chimney with care. We'll go through this. And so that's what I mean by I wanted to make the story part of the book, but I also wanted some interaction with it as far as being able to put photos in here because I thought this would be an amazing Christmas album. Okay. So I went through as I was going through the papers, and I kind of looked for strategic where uh, places to cut the papers. And then when I did that, I figured out what the pocket size was going to be. And then I used the, the parts that I cut off to line the top parts of the pockets or the sides of the pockets, because some of them are horizontal, some of them are vertical. But then you, you still get to see the whole page, the entire whole page. You get to see the poem. You get to see the beautiful pictures they're not going to be covered up with like photo mats or anything like that but you also do have photo mats inside the pockets so on in every pocket I did use um, one of these tags that I made with the heartfelt creations album and tag accents and I used that die I've had this for a while I did get it from country craft creations and it's an amazing die so I did use that but then I also had these tags and these are actually craft colored tags and they're by delusions let me show you these real quick um i did buy these from the store as well and when i bought them i guess i didn't really pay attention to how big they were i mean they're ginormous they're like um five and an eighth by ten and a half and i was like uh oh when i got them i was like what am i going to do with them but then th they turned out to be the absolute perfect um tag for this book because the pages themselves if you don't um, count the binding and the give space are eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So they're fairly large pages. So what I ended up doing on some of these was taking one of the tags and I scored it at seven and a half and then I folded that bottom up and I used a piece of the pattern paper to cover the top part of the tag and then the pocket. And again, to kind of keep it in continuity with the pattern paper. And then I added a little bit, um, a couple of the die or the tags from the paper collection in that. So you still have these tags, you have this, you have space on the back here. You can put photos, you can tuck photos in the pocket and then they just tuck in the pocket. So they not only give you the photo space, but they also, um, add a little pop of color with the ribbon. I did use some eyelets from my stash to, to put through. Um, some of the tags, if they're um, on a side page like this one, I just cut it off at seven and a half and didn't put the pocket on. So some of them have pockets and some of them don't. So that's totally your choice. But on the back of all of them, they're all blank. So you can add a really nice sized photo on the back of these. And then again, the ribbons give it a little pop of color, but you still get to see the pages. So let's go through the pages real quick. And then we'll I'll talk about how to put this together. Now, unfortunately, I don't have another pack of this paper. Um, all the pockets are different on, on all the pages, and I'm going to explain that as we go through. So it's kind of hard to recreate this album completely in the tutorial, but I'm going to show you exactly what I did, and I'm going to show you this chart that I'm going to um, type up, and I'll have a link that you can download that chart and hopefully everything is correct and I get it all right the first time and um, you'll be able to see that, okay? So let's go through. So again, the cover, Twas the Night Before Christmas and then we have this page here. I did not add a pocket or anything to the inside cover. The inside covers with the matting and how I put them together are done exactly as the outside covers. So I'm gonna go through that with you. Um, first page here we already went through. I did add some flowers from my stash. The ribbons were from my stash, but again, the tags, the die, and the actual delusions tags are from the store, from Country Craft Creations. So we have this page here, then you turn it. 
Um, the children were nestled all snug in their beds. So that page here, I actually chose to cut the side off of it. Um, give it a little bit of interest. So some pockets are horizontal, some are vertical. And I added one tag here for photo map opportunity. Now there's more. You can put more in here. You can add photos in there, whatever you want to do. Um, but I just did that. Um, let's talk about the gussets. There's a, um, I did a 3 8 inch gusset on this one. And the reason why I did do that is because... Um, I do have five pages in this album, and I'll talk about if you want to make a half-inch gusset and um, create a little bit more space, I'll show you how to, or I'll tell you how to do that um, when we get to the tutorial. And I do have my quarter-inch give space as well that I like to add because I have pockets and embellishments on the album. So the next page here, page two, the front, away to the window, I flew like a flash. I decided to cut it right here. And then you can see that Papa is looking out at the window and spying Santa Claus coming. And I put one tag in here that's kind of off to the side so you can see him looking through the window. So you still have the whole page to look at as a story. The next page says the moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster to midday of midday to objects below. In this particular pocket, I added two tags. The top was um, kind of, um, you know, just continuation of the beautiful paper here with the holly and everything. And I added another tag here and I did use another piece of, you know, of course the pattern paper and added some of the tags from the cut aparts that you get in the collection. Again, blank on the other side. And then on these, I used the brown artisan cardstock and then I used natural um, to mat those. So I'll, you know, tell you that right up front. And I made 10 of these size tags total, and I did five of the delusions tags. Um, the next page, when what to my wondering eyes did appear. So this page here, again, I chose to cut off this side here and make a horizontal pocket. Added some flowers from my stash. And then like I showed you before, I have one tag here. And then this tag here, I chose not to do a pocket on it because it was a sideways tag. Um, and then... Um, just left it blank on the back and that tucks right in here. The next page, so up to the housetop, the coursers they flew and I added one of the tags here. So you can see how I kind of, and like I said, every pocket is basically kind of different. So we're gonna go through that, but it depended on the page. It depended on the actual picture on my album, where I cut it and how I cut the pockets. So I'll, I'll show you that. So here down um, the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. Again, some more um, flowers from my stash to just kind of add a little pop of color when you take the tags out. So you see, even with the tags in, you still get the story with this album, which is what I really was wanting to do. That, that was my main focus is like, don't cover up the words, don't cover up the pictures. Um, again, another tag set in this pocket here. And then the next page, the stump of a pipey, I'll tighten his teeth. And then you can see I did a, a pocket here and I chose to cut it right here. So you get that full page here and the full picture. And then we have our little tag here. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work. And then the tags here, when you take them out, you do see the top of the mantle. And then you have your tag here and then more little tags on the inside there. You can tuck lots of pictures. There's lots of space. The tags or the pockets are pretty deep. Um, and then the last page here and leaving his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. One tag in here. And then the last page is the last line of the story. But I heard him exclaim as ere he drove out of sight. Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. I love how this turned out. So, so you can see that I got the whole, you know, the story in here with the pages and I have places for tags. So let's go through um, how to do this. So let's start off by talking about the cover. So for the cover for the chipboard, and this is using the lay flat method, and I'm going to link the video on how to do that if you're not familiar, but let's talk about the cover first. So you will need... Um, for the chipboard, you will need two that are nine by eight and a half. So they're nine wide, eight and a half tall. And then for the spine piece, you'll need a two and a quarter by eight and a half 
inch um, piece of chipboard for your spine. And then the cardstock to wrap it all, you will need um, two pieces that are 11 by 10 and a half, a piece that's five and a quarter by 10 and a half, and that will wrap the spine, and then a piece that's six by eight and three eighths, and that will be the inside of the spine. And then the pattern paper. So I chose this page and then the page with all the reindeer names on there for the front and the back of the outside covers. So you will need, for the outside, you will need two of the eight by eight papers and then um, you will need, these pieces here are cut from the red um, pattern paper here. You'll need one that's seven eighths by eight, that goes on the spine. And then I did put a, a bit of ribbon down the middle of the spine just to add another little pop of color to that. And then you will need two pieces that are two by eight. And those are the front and the back red pieces here. Now the gold mirror paper, and I did forget one measurement here because I did forget to write one down on the spine. So we'll do that here real quick. But you will need for the front cover, front and back, you will need two pieces that are eight and three quarters by eight and a quarter. And then you will need a piece for the spine and we'll write that down. So that is, how did I do that? Two and an eighth by eight and a quarter. So you will need one that's two and one eighth wide by eight and one quarter. Okay. And then the pattern paper here, the one and seven eighths by eight, that's gonna go on the cover. Okay. So then how I put all of this together, let me just show you that really quick because I did um, make kind of a model, I guess you could say. So let's put the book here. We'll put that there so it's still in frame. And then we have our pieces. So I'm going to pretend that this cardstock is the gold mirror. And then we have our eight by eight page that we're going to use. And then we have our two um, by eight piece here. So this is the gold mirror and the pattern paper. Okay. This is how I covered the front, how I did the back. And then also how I did the insides. And you notice on the inside, I did use olive artisan cardstock instead of gold mirror. So um, you will need a couple pieces of that. And then um, if you notice here, I did actually put a piece of the olive on the spine before I put the pages on and then realized very quickly that why did I do that? Because my pages totally covered it up. So you don't need to do it on the spine, but you do need to have um, some pieces on the inside cover of your spine. So I did use olive instead of the gold mirror to mat the pattern paper on the inside cover. So that's how I did that. Um, let's super real quick, and I'm just gonna use score tape on this because this is a model, but we have our gold mirror piece that's represented by the yellow paper there. And then we have our off-white paper here that's representing the pattern paper for the front cover, front and back, okay? So I'm just going to lay this down, and I did use art glitter glue. I did not use score tape to do this part um, for our pattern paper. Um, but you're just going to, there's going to be an eighth of an inch of a border um, around. So I'm just going to line that up and lay that down, okay? And then it looks like this, but then I wanted a little wider piece of the red to kind of give that, um, you know, book kind of feel. And it fit with the papers and it didn't cover up any of my words. So the two inches, I liked that two inch piece. So that's why I cut it like that for the front and the back. Okay. So then I just layered that over top of that. So I didn't cut that at all, I just used the whole thing. If you want to cut it off and match it up, you totally can. I just did not do that. And then you just lay your red piece down like that. And then all I did after that was I took a piece of score tape along that edge. And then I took a piece of the ribbon that I chose and I laid that right over the seam of the pattern paper, okay? And so it looks like this. And this is all before you add it to the book. So you wanna do all of this before you glue it to the cover of your book, okay? Then flip it over and then I use just a little bit of score tape 
and then I just wrapped my ribbon around the edge and adhered it to the back and do at least about you know an inch or so of overlap on the back um, I like I didn't want to cut the ribbon off and have you know a potential of anything fraying and I wanted that nice rounded edge over the gold mirror and then I just after I got done I just glued it to the front of my album and then of course on the back you will want to reverse it like so okay and that's how I covered the front and the back and then that's also how I did the insides as well okay so the same thing I just used olive cardstock instead of the gold mirror okay so that's and I chose the holly paper um, pattern to do the two inch pieces on the covers and then I also use the rest of it to go in between my pages and that's where I used that paper to kind of accent the spine pieces okay so that kind of is in continuity as well okay so that's how I did the cover on the outside and then of course on the insides as well um, let's talk about the inside cover so again um, I wrote this out as well. The inside cover for the pattern paper, again, you're gonna need two that are eight by eight, and then um, you're gonna need two pieces that are two by eight. So those were represented by the pattern paper and then the holly paper. The cardstock, um, again, this was in olive, and that's what I used to mat the pattern papers, eight and three quarters by eight and a quarter. And then on the spine, you will need six pieces of one quarter inch wide by eight. And that's done with the same, again, the same paper that I used to do the inside gusset pieces so it all matches all the way across, okay? Just like the outside matches all the way across, okay? So there's that. And I'm, I know this is a different way of doing the tutorial. Um, bear with me on this because, um, again, I don't have more of this pattern paper. I <laughs> used it all. And since all of the pockets are different, I just wanted to, you know, just kind of walk you through this um, and then I'm going to have the chart so you'll know exactly like what papers where to cut it all that stuff I'm gonna have that chart and I'll show you that I have it written out in um, pencil right now <laughs> or uh, in pen but I'm gonna have it all typed up nice and pretty for you so um, base pages you will need five pieces of cardstock that are eight and seven eighths by eight and a quarter okay on this eight and seven eighths you're gonna score at, and this is how I did it so that I made sure that I had an eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter page in case I cut it a little bit off or whatever. I wanted the pages to make sure that they were perfectly cut and folded so that I could fit my eight by eight pattern paper on the page. Okay. Um, so I put it in my scoreboard and I scored it at eight and a quarter and eight and a half. And that gives you a three eighth inch piece that attaches to the spine and a quarter inch gives space. So let me show you. So I put my pattern paper in, or my pattern paper, I put my cardstock in, eight and seven eighths at the top, eight and a quarter on the side here, and then I scored at eight and a quarter and eight and a half. So that gives me my eight and a quarter inch page. It gives me my um, quarter inch give space, and then this is a three eighths inch space to adhere to my spine, okay? And then you've seen me do this before. It's kind of like a waterfall um, type thing or a um, an L uh, hinge kind of thing. That's how I add my pages into my book. So this is the piece that will actually adhere to the page and then you have your quarter inch kind of give space that gives you a little bit of extra room for when you add things onto your page it helps everything work nice and and turn well and give you room for your adding your pockets and all that stuff um so that's the base pages again you will need five pieces of cardstock eight and seven eighths by eight and a quarter so then let's talk about the spine here real quick um while we're on the subject Okay, so when I do my albums, I'm trying to figure out how wide my spine is. I don't want my spine too wide, um, but I don't want it too narrow either. And the other thing with this particular project, I knew I wasn't going to do a lot of embellishments on the pages because I really wanted the pattern to sing. I just wanted that to be the main focus. So I did a little bit of embellishing, but not a whole lot because I really 
wanted to focus on the paper. Um, so that's one of the reasons, besides the fact that I had five pages, that I chose to do a narrower um, gusset on these pages. So when I'm looking at my books, so I kind of kind of draw out a little schematic and I think about it. So if you imagine that this outer, these two outer lines are the covers of your album, and then here are my pages, one, two, three, four, five. So then I can go through and do some math and see how wide my spine is going to be. So if you ignore this part here for right now, I went with three eighths of an inch of a gusset. So three eighths in between all my pages and all my covers. And when you add that up, that gives me a two and a quarter inch spine, which is a nice size spine. Um, if I was to go at a half inch, if you ignore this top part here, if I was to go at a half inch in between all the covers and all the pages, I would end up with a three inch spine, which is fine. It's not too huge, but it was a little bit bigger than I really wanted to do. So that's why I went with the, the three eighths. If you, as my viewer, would rather do a one and a half inch spine, that's or a one half inch gusset between all your pages, that's fine. You will need um, to do your base pages a little bit differently. You'll have to cut them a little bit wider to make up for that half inch space. So you will need to cut your pages at nine inches by eight and a quarter, score them the same. Put them in your scoreboard with the nine at the top, score at eight and a quarter and at eight and a half, and that will give you um, that half inch piece instead of a three eighths inch piece. I hope that makes sense. It'll give you that half inch piece to adhere to your spine. Okay. So this piece here will be half inch instead of three eighths. Okay. If you want to do that, if you want a wider spine, if you want a little more room um, between your pages, but I did not do that because of how I wanted to do my pages. And I hope that makes sense. And I hope I'm not like over explaining it and totally confusing you. If you have any questions, let me know. But that's how I generally we'll do that. I'll figure out how many pages I want. I look at how thick I want my pages as far as am I doing a lot of elements on there? Am I putting a lot of embellishments? Like these all have just one pocket and a few flowers and that's it. So I didn't need a whole lot of room. So I did go ahead and go with the smaller spine. That was my thinking on why I did that. And so I hope that makes sense. Um, with all of the pockets, I'm going to show you my chart here, okay? So this looks like a whole lot, and I'm going to type it up nice and pretty. But when I went through all of my pages, so I figured out where I wanted to cut. Like on this one here, I wanted to cut right above the mantle here where the stockings were hung, okay? And so then what I did was I measured down, and that's what I cut off, and then... With the leftover pattern paper, that's how I figured my pocket. So for example, on this page here, on page number one, the stockings were hung is on the is the, the quote on the pattern paper. Page one front, I cut one third off the top, which left me a piece that was eight inch wide by six and a quarter. So this pattern paper here is eight inches wide by six and a quarter this piece here is one and three quarters, okay? So then for the pocket for this, what I ended up doing, because I wanted an eighth inch around, so I had to cut this pocket to make it so that it was um, a quarter of an inch bigger than this paper, right? And then add the tabs for adhering it down. So I cut the piece at nine and a quarter by seven. I scored at nine and a quarter, on the nine and a quarter at a half an inch on each end, and then on the seven at a half an inch. And what that did was that gave me the perfect pocket for this page. So if you're going to do this book, the way I'm gonna do it, you'll have this chart and it's gonna give you all the information. So which paper to pick, which this one will be the stockings were hung that goes on page one front, and it'll tell you to cut off a certain thing off the top or some off the left side, some off the top, that kind of thing. Um, this is going to be all written out for you. And I'll have it so you can download this. Because I know, and I don't normally do this like super um, 
you know, precise on my cutting guides, but because this album is so different, I wanted to make sure that if you buy this paper and you make this album, that we are successful at it, okay? So please, um, the other thing too is, please, um, when you, you know, I'm, I'm going to endeavor to make this as absolutely accurate as absolutely possible. Please measure, please dry fit, please make sure that everything is good before you, you know, cut and glue and do all that stuff, okay? So for every single page, I will have that written down. What paper to use, what page it goes on, what to cut off, what you're gonna end up left over for the actual on the pocket, and then how to make the pocket, okay? That's gonna be all done for you. In total, let me show you this. This will be a little easier for you to see. In total for your pockets, you will need 10 pockets all together. So one on each side of your five pages. And they're going to all be a little bit different. So you can see they're all a little bit different. So you will need, a nine, they're all nine and a quarter by a different size. So the one by five, you'll need one of those. The nine and a quarter by six, you'll need one of those. Nine and a quarter by six and a quarter, one of those. You will need two that are nine and a quarter by six and a half. You will need two that are nine and a quarter by six and three quarters. And then you will need three that are nine and a quarter by seven, okay? And that will cover all of the pages and all of your pockets. And then when you get your pockets, so they're all done the same, you're going to have, this is just an example, nine and a quarter wide. They're all gonna be nine and a quarter wide, um, no matter if they're a horizontal pocket or if they're a vertical pocket, doesn't matter. They're all gonna be nine and a quarter. They're just gonna be different depths to match the paper on your page, okay? So they'll either be like this or they'll be like that on your page, depending on which page you're making. And then you're gonna score them all the same. They're all gonna be scored at half an inch on the nine and a quarter side, half an inch on each end. And then on the shorter side, whether it's five or seven or anything in between, you'll score that at half an inch and they'll all be done exactly the same way. And then when you take your base page, depending on um, if your pocket is going this way or excuse me, this way, all the pockets either open to the top or to the outside of the book, okay? Um, and then you're just gonna glue it down. Now, when you glue it down, um, I am going to, come on, glue. Maybe, okay, let's go with the score tape. Let's just do that. That'll be easier and I will clean my glue bottle. All right, so I'm using the score tape. I actually, in the album, I use glue, so don't use, this is for an example. Um, I'm gonna glue this down, and when you do it to the sides, next to the score lines, just do it next to the score line. Don't go in the score line, okay? So we're gonna glue that down. We're gonna make sure that's all glued down, right? And then you're going to use your tape. And the reason why is because you're using one eight by eight sheet of paper for, your page okay so we're gonna and then we're gonna glue this down so once you put the tape down here that's gonna cover up that seam and then make your tags easy to slip in and they won't get caught up in that tab okay um and then you're going to take your art glitter glue not your score tape remember this is just a, a quickie model here you're gonna just glue that down and then your eight by eight papers let me let's cut that and i'll show you how that's gonna be let me grab my trimmer. We'll grab another piece of scrap paper here. So we're gonna have our pattern paper. This is gonna just pretend to be our pattern paper here. We're gonna cut it at eight by eight. Okay, and then for this particular page, the pocket that we're creating Okay, so it measures, once we're all done, five and a half. So that means with the quarter inch that we need to make the borders, we're gonna have our pattern paper cut at five and a quarter. All right, so on this particular page, according to our chart, we're gonna have 
our pattern paper here like this and then the piece that we cut off will just kind of tuck barely underneath that pocket okay which is why we're going to want to put that tape in there because you can see that that pattern paper obviously is not going to go down and cover those tabs okay so that's why we're going to do the tape down there and i hope that makes sense so for the pockets like for this example let's find a horizontal pocket like for this one um, not the same size, but you get the drift. We're going to cut this piece off. This piece here is going to just go barely underneath the pocket when you glue it down. Okay. And then this piece here will cover the outside of the pocket. And you should have a nice eighth inch border all the way around there. Okay. I hope that makes sense with that. Um, so that is how you do every single one of your pockets. Okay. So again, those are the sizes that you need. It will be on the chart um, that I'm going to have available for you. And then last but not least, um, when you do your spine, um, so it ha attaching the pages to the book. This is representing the inside of our spine here, okay? So our inside spine piece right here is two and a quarter inches. There is three eighths inch in between, between the covers and between all of the pages like we talked about earlier. So basically what you're gonna do is once you have your cover done and you have your pages and you're ready to put them in, you're going to just measure over from the edge of your spine, three eighths of an inch, and that's where you're gonna start laying your pages down. So if this represents the inside of the spine, what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your page and you have your piece that attaches and then you have your give space. What we're gonna do is fold that piece that attaches and, and I keep using my glue even though I need to clean out the tip because it's not working. So we're gonna just pretend with the score tape here Okay, so you're going to actually want to use art glitter glue. Um, score tape can loosen. And the art glitter glue, I've never had it loosen. Okay, so your spine, um, I drew a black line to represent the 3 8 inch space. And then you're just going to lay that down. And you're going to have about an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom. And you're just going to lay that down okay so it's just like kind of like a waterfall the next page goes against it next page goes against it just remember that let me grab a piece of paper real quick to show you super fast when we get to the very last page So I'm just going to use this piece of paper to represent a page, okay? Um, I hope this all makes sense. So you have your pages, and you're just going to keep adding them. So you're going to take your next page, and I didn't do a gusset space here. I probably should, but um, this is just the attachment piece. It's going to just butt up right against the edge of that page and then when you glue that down you know it will look like this and it will just keep going and keep going when you get to the last page before you put the last page on whoop, sorry about that when you get to the last page what I like to do is I don't like the tabs showing on my spine so what I do with that last tab is I overlap it onto the previous page so that you have a nice edge here so what you're gonna do if you visualize let's pretend that we're now on the last page okay and here's the tab right here for the last page we're going to instead of gluing it down like that the very last one will go over the top like that so that when you turn the page you have a nice spine here just like you have a nice spine here and then you can use your strips of quarter inch pattern paper to go over the top um, I hope that makes sense um, if you have seen some of my other tutorials this this will make sense but again because this book is so different in its construction as far as the pockets all being different um, 
That's why I'm trying to do it this way. I hope this works out um, and, and it makes sense to you. If you've been following me, then you've kind of seen me do this a bunch of times before as far as, um, you know, making my pages because this is kind of my, my go-to when I make my pages. But um, if you do have any questions, please, please, please let me know. Um, this book is really gorgeous. And again, the reason why I'm doing the tutorial this way and everything is because of the nature of this book. I just really wanted the pages to sing and, and be in and of itself the decoration of this book. So I went very simple. There's no waterfalls or flips or anything like that if you want to make different things and put in the pockets you more than you you could totally can do that but I just tried to keep it super simple and again I used my eight by eight pack and um yeah <laughs> I don't have any more left so I hope this makes sense I hope you understand um what I was trying to show you with this this is a great project I'm gonna have that um I'm going to have that chart for you, and um, I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. And this paper, again, is by Country Craft Creations. It's called Twas the Night, and it's an amazing collection. Um, so anyways, um, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Have fun making this project, and I will see you again soon with more tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.